Well, uh, depends on what you mean by center. Sometimes there are centers which have affiliations with universities. That's fine. I don't know, the Woodrow Wilson Center. Or we had one, one of my grantees recently went, she was affiliated with a center, um, some medical training center, but which was affiliated to a university but was not a degree granting institute. So uh, you would have to give me maybe a better idea of what sort of center. Okay. So they, they, they really do a lot of work on male and female learn differently. Uh -huh. So it's based in Colorado Springs in Denver. So it's attached with the uh, city of Colorado. Yeah, okay, that, no, that would be fine. That's, that's fine, yes. That, you could easily, and that would be a very interesting one, actually. So I would encourage you to apply, but that's fine, yes. Yes, I'm sorry, this young lady here. Well, you're lucky because education in the U.S. is free. Even the books, everything. So you don't have anything to pay. So wherever you live, you simply walk your child down to the nearest public school, enroll them, and that's done. So we have lots of children who, uh, who have been through American schools like that. And they accept it. It's no problem in American schools. Uh, even if your child doesn't speak English, it doesn't matter. Probably half the kids in American schools don't speak English anymore anyway. <laughs> we, no, I mean, where I was, where my, where my son went to school in California in, in the elementary school, the, in, in his school, uh, there were about 800 students and they spoke 42 languages. So it was like a big mix. So it's very easy for international children to mix right in. Uh, but yeah, it's absolutely free. As long as you, because you would be on a J-1 visa, which allows you to enroll your children in schools. Yes, anything? Ah, here's a man, yes. Uh, so thank you for your show. Uh, I want to ask about the uh, Uber scholars, uh, because uh, as far as I, my, my understanding is, uh, my academics and uh, the years I'm trying to go for, I think, this, this uh, such uh, scholarship. You need to go during your study term. Am I right? I'm not sure. Well, yes, although that aspect of it really does not involve us so much as it involves your institution. As to, as we, as far as we're concerned, we're happy to send you any time, but you do have to normally uh, arrange a sabbatical, I suppose, yes. And, and a Fulbright grant must be for a minimum of three months. So if you had, say, two months, you, you, you couldn't squeeze a three month into a two month. But uh, so you do have to go be a minimum of three months. Yes. 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 Um, all right. Before, a few years ago, we would have grantees that went for eight months. Uh, recently, we've decided it might be better to be shorter, so we've put three to six there. If you had a particular compelling reason to go for eight and you made the case, we would be willing to consider that as well. So six or eight, roughly, three to six or three to eight. We can talk about that later once you get your grant. <laughs> and you have to get an offer, right? 
Uh, wait, I'm sorry, for which program? Oh, scholars. Well, yeah, we like to see, uh, usually I say almost, I guess everyone has had some sort of invitation from an institution. Uh, that which, and that, we, that shows us that you've done some, some research and some work in reaching out. We don't like someone to say, I want to do s research in, I don't know, again, uh, fertility studies, but I have no idea where I'm going. Well, then that means, that puts the burden on us to try to find someone. We like to see someone who's already reached out, made some contacts, and usually that's not a problem. Usually our Malaysian applicants uh, uh, get at least one, often two or three invitations from U.S. universities. As long as the U.S. universities understand that they are not under a financial constraint to receive you, and they're not, then they are usually, and if they're interested in what you want to do, then uh, you, you will receive an invitation. So this one is fully funded? It's fully, ours is fully funded, yes. Um, if you go with dependents, you know, a husband, wife, and children, then that can be sometimes a bit of, you may have to put a, a little bit out of pocket for that because the grant is really spe specifically for one person. So, you know, with a second person on it, it could be a bit of a stretch, but. Uh, and if you have a so will not to receive any uh, other uh, financial? You can receive, not in the U.S., of course, you couldn't work or anything, but if you do have finance, uh, some funding from some, other institution or a grant program, even in Malaysia, then uh, you're allowed to do that as well, to complement. We have one right now who just got an, a, a, a supplemental grant from a, a local, I don't know, may have been Kazana, I'm not sure, uh, which supplements the Fulbright as well. Yeah. yeah. Yes? Yes, this is on the website. You would be applying for the senior scholarship uh, this August or September, I can't remember, to go one year. So that would be usually August or September 2015, you would be applying now. Yes. Now wait a minute. The, the full, no, there's the ETA. Or there's an FLTA, which is for oh ETA. That's for Americans coming in. Yes. yes right. And there, yeah, we have 100 now. Yes. Um, would, would it be possible for private, uh, unassisted schools? No. Unfortunately, this program is co-administered by the Ministry of Education, and they decide on the schools. We have no de we have no choice in the schools. So they have already, they designate the schools for us. They say, your people will be here, 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 here. So it's not the school that actually forward. No. I wish it were that way. That would be better. But it isn't that way. It's dictated from way up there. In the, actually, not even the, it's not even the ministry that decides. It's the uh, cabinet that decides. It goes very high. Uh, and that's the DPM, Muhyiddin, who decides. So unfortunately. So we don't have any in Penang. Only in Sabah, Sarawak, Perak, Pahang, Tringanu, and Johor schools. All right. Yes. Oh, two two people back there. Good. Okay, I'm asking for the graduate study research program. Yes. Yeah. Um, first application deadline is um, in August. So let's say I'm in the final year, the first semester should still only be out in August. So um, what will be the like? All right, so you're going to finish when exactly here? What? Um, we're going to finish in July. Okay, perfect, okay. But, um, yeah, but the transcript of the... Don't worry about that. That's another problem among Malaysians. They always think that they must finish their program here or get their STPM or SPM before they apply. Well, you've missed it then, by then. You always apply before you finish, you see? So you, um, I, so you apply in August, um, as if you know you're finishing, you, you finished, and then don't worry about it. the transcripts. Will go later. Transcripts will be sent in. If they want to see your transcripts, it'll be much later. So don't worry about that. But you, uh, because act, as far as applying to the universities themselves, the, they don't need the applications until uh, usually November, sometimes December, January. We though at, Mo at Macy, we we want to see 
your transcripts up to the last ones, whatever you have, in, in August. We, if you don't have the very last one, that's okay. I don't, we don't. Uh, no. All right. Yes. Uh, okay, good morning. Um, my name is Linda, and I would like to ask about this uh, for the future teacher. Is it possible for the future teachers who are doing, um, currently doing undergraduate, uh, to do their internship in the U.S. for eight weeks? An internship for eight weeks. We don't have an internship program that, like that, though. Uh, we don't have one. I mean, unfortunately, that's not a program that exists in our for Macy. We have just the only one. We, well, we have this ILEP program I told you about. That's for secondary school teachers already teaching, and then we have this FLTA, which would be for young people who are going to be teachers who have just begun. But we don't have one for just an eight-week internship. Sorry. Okay, thank you. I wish we did. Any other questions? Next person who asks a question gets a scholarship. Quick. No. No, it doesn't work either. No. Ah, okay, yes. <laughs> okay. See, I like that. That's good initiative there. Yeah. Get your hand up right away. Yeah. Yeah, that's good enough. If you if you wanted somebody who's a specialist in academic publications and I don't know whatever you you think it up and you write a simple proposal, work scope of work, that's that's legitimate. Yes, um, the person could do workshops on academic publication or things like that. <coughs> um, unfortunately, we have just we have just filled up our quota for this year. For the first time in ten years, we have finished filled up our quota for this year. So the next specialist will be able to come in as of October only. That's October of 14. That starts our, our next year. October. We, we go on a fiscal year that is October 1st to September 30th. So, so the next people could come in uh, in October, November. That would be the next. We can't do it before that because our fiscal year, this year we've already given all of our senior specialist grants. No, 2014. October. This is something, this for the senior specialist is very quick. So if, if you give us about three months ahead of time, it's not competitive by the way, you're not competing against. If you say, look, uh, we want someone to come in three months from now, and this is what we want, and we, we think it's a good idea, we find the person, or you have the person, we can arrange it and it can be done. But the person cannot come in now until uh, October of 2014 because of the fiscal year, that's all. I don't know, all of a sudden, I mean, people did not listen to me for years. Now all of a sudden, for some reason, this year, everybody listened, and now we have all these quick, we gave out six grants just like that. <coughs> so kind of happy about that, but unfortunately, we, we, we don't have 10 anymore. So if you have some good ideas, uh, you know, you want to start a new program or, I don't know, look at your curriculum again or something, that's a good person to have come in. <coughs> The money we would give you for that would be enough for you to live on very comfortably. Oh, oh, I'm talking about the oh the American. Okay, I'm sorry, I was looking. You're talking about the American senior, yeah. Okay, this is the this is the way it works. <coughs> the institution, say it's USM, that wants the person to come in, must give a, some cost sharing, and that cost sharing is they must provide accommodation for the person. Uh, s a little bit for meals, and then any local transportation necessary if they want to put send them around different places. That's all. We on our side, we do all the recruiting, we pay the airfare and the medical insurance and the, and the honorarium, that type of thing. <coughs> so it does not come out to be very much money, a little bit for, for USM. Um, but I say, if you have a housing here for, fa for visiting people, that, that's good. And then maybe another, I don't know how much for 75 ringgit a day or something for food. I'm not sure what it is. That's all. So we can see before you apply to I mean, to the MSC, so we have to discuss with the UCS or yeah. 
No, again, uh, as far as whether your university is willing to, to do that, that's, that's your side. You decide that. Uh, we, we don't look into that. We simply decide if, if you are, you, you tell us, we are willing and able to, to accept this American. We can, we can share by offering accommodation and food. Uh, so then we say fine, and then we just we uh, we move we move ahead then, all right. <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot, Dato, but uh, apparently I am. Well, I think we have one point. Dato has moved right. Okay, it's gone. There are not many of these anyway. These are cases where anything can can bring somebody. At the university, we have uh, a visiting uh, appointment. We have visiting appointment. So. There's a budget for that. So if you have a, a person from the US who's willing to come and spend what, three months or four months with, with us, uh, it, would, it, would, it would certainly cater for it, especially if they've already been uh, partially funded by a full price uh, scholars uh, uh, program. So, so all you have to do is, uh, of course, apply to the university, but I can't see any problem with uh, the, the university funding Extra. Well, someone who's coming in for, say, three or four months, say like Dr. Chapman, uh, would, should be fully funded, so you should not have an yeah, obligation. Obviously. On the short-term senior specialist, you would have to do a bit of cost sharing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, right. Uh, um, so that's not a problem, yeah. I think this year we've had, we've had two at UM, one at UKM, I think one at UTM. I can't remember where the others have been. Um, yes. One is in USM. I, you know what, frankly, I, I get them mixed up. I can't remember one year to next where they go. But uh, what is that person working in? Again? Yeah. Apl exactly. I remember him now. Yes. Okay. All right. And his wife. Well, and they've already they've they've already left, haven't they? I hope they were polite here while they were here. Huh? No? All right. Good. Um, all right. Any. And to my Yemeni friend here, uh, please uh, contact the, uh, go on the website of the uh, Fulbright program for Yemen, just do Fulbright Yemen, and then you can look in there. They're probably giving a lot more now, because Yemen because, uh, is, is of political importance to the U.S., so they, all of a sudden more money goes in. So actually you might have more money in Yemen than you do in Malaysia for, for these types of programs. So. Well, okay, that, that's something that we at Macy and the U.S. Embassy want to see increased in Malaysia, exchanges, uh, student exchanges between American institutions and Malaysia. We currently don't have very many. They're very small, and they tend to be independent, so they don't go through us. If USM is interested in doing this, uh, I'd like to, you to talk to us about it. We are interested, but the problem is, is that we at Macy cannot uh, act as an intermediary with another institution in the U.S. It's, all, it's always up to the American institution and USM to talk and to come to a decision. Um, so we really, that's one of our highest priorities now, is to get institutional linkages going. Um, at the student level in particular, but also at the faculty level. But we'd like to, I think often those start with the, at the student level. And if we can get something going, I'm sorry, yes, Dato. Yeah. Um, uh, there have been exchange students between the US and Malaysia, but um, just for the information of Macy, uh, this semester, so not only really towards the end of this, this semester, we have uh, 12 students from the Gustavus Adolphus College in Minnesota. So they've organized a program where 12 of them come and spend one semester with us in a program that is co-organized. So we actually had the faculty from Gustavus coming to USN, and together we organized this program for one semester, and it's all credit transfer. So basically, Gustavus uh, will accredit the courses that they, they take here, which we offer, but just for them. So that's actually the first time that we're doing it with Gustavus, but otherwise it's always on an individual kind of yes. uh, travel. I'm embarrassed because I was not aware of this, and I, now that I know about it, I'm going to go back and tell people. That's re that is exactly what we want to see done on a much bigger scale, and then to see USM students go to yeah, Gustavus. Many, many, uh, the students are writing all their blogs. I think if, if you look at Gustavus USM, you, if you Google Gustavus USM, you'll find okay. the blogs from their students, and also a blog, an official blog from the university about the yeah. exchange program. So currently, 
Currently, it's only two students, but mm -hmm. they will see how, how it works with yeah. bigger groups. That's good. I'm, that's that's what I like. Good. I'm glad to have learned that. So that's a good example. Of, and if you know, if we can get more of that going, everyone would be very happy. But again, you know, they did not go through us, so I, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, institution to institution. Um, oh yeah, it's almost eleven. Well. I, you know, I advise you to look at our website, give us a call. If you come to KL, come by our office. We're always, oh, here, this gentleman, yes, good. West Point? Okay, it is possible. Uh, I was once involved in, uh, in sending students to uh, West Point and the Naval Academy as well uh, from Tunisia. But since that is a U.S. military school, West Point, the, the program to recruit Malaysians to go to attend is done through the military attaché in the U.S. Embassy. It's not through us. Um, I'm not sure about how that is done. Usually there are military to military links and they, and they do the recruitment. So I, 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 it is possible and I think that you have at least one Malaysian going to these academies every year, but I, it, it has, because it is military, it has nothing to do with, uh, with us. Fulbright, by the way, is supposed to stay clear of anything military. So we, military or intelligence, we're not supposed to have anything to do with it. So that's why. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know exactly who to talk to unless you know someone in the military who who has a link with the military office in the embassy, but it's competitive. It's very competitive to get into the military academy. They usually have a quota for international people. I don't know how big, so they get people from different countries, and I'm sure there's at least one Malaysian in there, but uh, I don't know anything else about it. Yeah. So we were sending some of our group officers, which are regular officers, to go to West Point for uh, some kind of exchange program. But not the four years, huh? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was thinking more of the four-year program, where they come in at 18 or 19 and do the four years. Um, this would be a specialized program, which is entirely military to military, so I don't know. I, I just have a question for that before you leave.
I think BC at the moment doesn't have uh, 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 an organized student exchange program, so we have to deal with other uh, other uh, entities, and I suppose we deal with individual universities for such programs too. Yes, that's, that's never been part of Macy's mandate to deal with the undergraduate student exchanges. One good piece of news is that uh, in the wake of President Obama's visit here, he talked about this new program the American government is starting called YSEALI, Y-S-E-A-L-I. It's Young Southeast Asian Leadership or Leaders, Leaders Initiative. What, the, what it is is they're going to direct, I think, close to $10 million now to Malaysia or no, to Southeast Asia, I'm sorry, not just Malaysia, to ASEAN countries, to help young, uh, young leaders or future leaders, potential leaders between 18 and 25. And part of that will be involved, I think, in encur encouraging sorts of exchanges and sending people off. So what I'm, I, I'm just saying is it looks as if there's some money coming in that will be funding some type of programs to send more young Malaysians, uh, undergraduate age, to the US for specialized types of programs. We will see what they are, um, but they're starting now. They're, the, they're in the planning stages. Macy may be involved, maybe not. I don't know. Um, Otherwise, the embassy will be doing it. Just yeah. to continue with that, actually, one, one thing about the student exchange, uh, we have lots of student exchange from, from Europe coming in, for example. We have a lot from Finland coming here. Yeah. So from abroad, there are more students coming to Malaysia uh, for exchange than there are Malaysians doing now. The, the main reason is the cost. Yeah. That, that's one reason. But the other thing that we also noticed is that uh, many of the Malaysians, of course, because it's very costly, they expect to be supported. Whereas when I speak to some of the Americans, they actually find their own money. And that's one thing I, I was very impressed. The student who came, for example, I, I met a, a family. I was talking about their son who came to Sarawak. He spent like, one semester in Sarawak. The, but the point was, the father was saying that his son actually spent, what, two semesters actually washing cars just to make money to travel to Malaysia. So the, the kind of spirit, the kind of mm -hmm. spirit, the effort made to find funding to travel to Malaysia. But of course, it's perhaps cheaper to come here than for us to go to go to the US. But, but the effort made in terms of uh, just to go on an exchange program, they, they actually work part time, they find ways not, not actually being funded, but they found ways of actually getting money yeah, to yeah. travel. So, <coughs> whereas here, we are generally expecting to be funded, uh, that does again another, another issue. But of course, for us to go out, it does cost a bit more. Yeah. Uh, the, the cost of living is higher. For, for all our students that come from Malaysia, they find things very cheap anyway, and they, they, they find that they can afford it. But that's also another issue. So we still have this imbalance <coughs> that more students are coming to Malaysia and change, yeah. but less from Malaysia. So cost, I think mean, the it's cost. cost. I mean, I would like to see your ministry put in more money toward uh, covering some of that. But I will leave that to Dr. Rosina to settle with them, <laughs> not me. Thank you. Thank you for staying awake. Um, I'd like to invite Dr. Shukri, our Deputy Vice President, to give a token of appreciation to Dr. James. Oh, you want me to come down? Actually, I'd just like to offer you, it's, it's just a small thing, but this, this was our 50th anniversary this year, so we put together a 50th anniversary book. I mean, it's not, don't worry, it's not a lot of dry reading. It's a okay. lot of photographs okay. and the things. Okay. History. <laughs> You'll even see your prime minister in there when he was 26, 26 years old. Oh, cool. And here, I'd like to give you one more. Thank you. Well, there he is, right there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Grant from a Macy okay. director there. Oh, okay. So, okay. Uh, so you can just see. Thank you. So, anyway, thank you very much. Thank you.